Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. This is News and Views with me, Julie Ali. It is just gone 9.39 a.m. And next, uh, we're going to have a very important and a necessary discussion uh, with Zahira Singh. She is a psychologist accredited with the British Psychological Society, accredited counsellor and director of Tough Love South Africa. And we're going to be looking at the issue around Palestine. We have been bombarded with uh, images of uh, the genocide in Palestine. Uh, I don't even think if you watch a horror movie, uh, are you subject to the horrors we've seen flashing on our screens. So I've made these comments over the past few weeks. From the time uh, this genocide has started, I kept telling my producer that if this is the way I feel. I wonder how the Palestinians are dealing with and feeling about their situation. They are in the situation. We are very, very far removed, a half a world away. And we see these flashes, we see these images on our screen, and yet it has this very, very negative impact on us. I mean, a week ago, I woke up and I said, I feel so heavy. I feel so depressed. Um, and I couldn't understand why I was feeling this way. And then eventually, I realized it's, you know, it's the situation of the war in Palestine. So let's talk with Zahira Singh and let's understand what is it that we do um, how do we cope with this situation? We want to be supporting the Palestinian people. And clearly, if we don't see the horror uh, playing out on our TV screens and these stories being told over and over again, we won't know the scale of the devastation. <clears throat> Marv. And if we don't know the scale of the devastation, then we're just going to think, oh, it's business as usual, and we're not going to become um, active in supporting the Palestinian cause. We're not going to speak up in solidarity with them, and they are then going to be a forgotten people. So let's hear what Zahira has to say. Assalamu alaikum, dear sister. Zahira Singh, welcome to the program. Nice to be talking with you after a very, very long time. It's a pleasure to be here and it's great to be meeting with you again. Yep. Uh, but under very, very sad and traumatic um, uh, conditions, of course. Would it be correct to say, Zahira, could, would it be correct for me to say I am so traumatized by what I've seen on the screen over the past few months? And then how do I deal with my trauma? 100%. I think all of our Muslim brothers and sisters have been feeling the same. And I think we've been, because of the bombardment from um, social media and media in general, and obviously all the trauma that's being experienced by, you know, our Muslim brothers and sisters, it is very, very traumatic. And it's also very difficult for us to deal with, especially when we're dealing in a diverse country and not everybody takes the same stand as you do. It's very difficult. However, you know, there are methods and there are means. A lot of people, what they tend to do is they tend to dissociate and rather ignore it, you know, when it shouldn't be that way. I think what you need to do is what we all as people need to do is we need to understand that it is a healing process. We need to know that our Muslim brothers and sisters are suffering, but we can heal. We cannot internalize it to the extent where we can, we are unable to help them. We need to have coping methods and mechanisms for us in place so that we can help them better. You know, okay, so trying to help somebody from an empty cup, you cannot do that. So if you are healed, course. you are able to help them from a better perspective. I like that analogy. You can't help in, you know, you can't help someone if your cup is not full. Uh, so let's look at the situation. We we sympathize, um, empathize, and feel for the Palestinian people because we do know that this war, uh, that these people have been um, 
under subjugation and invasion by illegal occupiers. And I think we would take the stance, you know, anywhere in the world where we see people are being unfairly, um, you know, ruled like the Rohingya, the Uyghur people in China, wherever there is an apartheid system in place, whether the people are Muslim or not, we would want to speak up for their rights. But what about the other? What about people who don't uh, empathize with the Palestinian cause? Uh, would you say uh, that they are equally affected or is their experience totally different to ours? I would say that the experience is totally different from ours. And the reason for that being is, is that they've obviously chosen a different stance in that they believe that, you know, um, it's all well for the children of Israel or, you know, they, they promote what they call the children of Israel for them to take, you know, to take over their land and that type of thing. However, you know, aside from our Muslim brothers and sisters, I mean, there are, a phenomenal a magnitude amount of people that support the Palestinian people because Palestine is it has been their land. And if we look at you know the authentic writings in the Torah, it talks about that the Israeli people had no land. They didn't they never had land to begin with. However, if people still have chosen the, the sons of choosing for the Israelis, then obviously they are not suffering the trauma that we are. And if they do, it's sensationalized. Okay, so how do we protect our mental health while keeping tabs on the genocide in Palestine? Because if we don't, we won't know what's happening and um, we won't be that uh, prepared possibly. Uh, we won't be able to empathize with our Palestinian brothers and sisters and we may just forget them and we don't want to forget the horrors that, um, you know, that they're undergoing. 100%. So remember that there's no right or wrong way to feel about our Palestinian brothers and sisters. Okay. There is, we have to, we cannot ignore our feelings. We know that it will be a slow recovery. We also know that for as long as they are in pain, we are in pain. And for as long as we recognize that and we don't obsess about the traumatic events, we will be fine. In addition to that, you know, we need to take regular breaks from, from all the media that's being displayed. We know that social media is rife. We know that you're going to see the same video maybe five times. Okay. But once you reestablish a routine for yourself, once you know, okay, fine, you know, I'm going to be looking at my videos between this time and that time. I'm going to feel my feelings. I'm going to I'm going to go through my trauma. I'm going to cry if I need to. I'm not going to judge myself. And I'm going to be fine with what, whatever is happening, but I'm still going to be able to help them because I know I'm stronger than that. Um, you also say in your talking points, one needs to check in with oneself. What does that mean? How do, what do you do to check in? What is the self-talk? I, I presume you're going to go through uh, some, some sort of self-talk with yourself uh, when you're checking in. Yes. So there's a few things like you can, um, in order to remember, when you want to self-talk, you can either motivate yourself in saying, you know what, I'm going to help them. I'm not going to um, let my emotions control me. I am going to control myself and I'm going to be able to help them. Let me find ways and methods to do that. The other thing is, is that when you find yourself being lost, you know, internalizing it so much that you that you are no longer part of what is going on around you, that you're so overwhelmed with what is happening with people in Palestine that you totally ignore what's happening around you. That's when you've got to bring yourself back and you've got to simply sit down or simply look around yourself and, you know, look at what am I looking at? I'm looking at the glass in front of me. I'm looking at the walls around me. I'm looking at um, the green trees outside. You know, yes. Remembering where you are, okay, taking slow breaths, maybe write in a journal, you know, write about how you're feeling, write a letter to a Palestinian child, write a letter to a Palestinian adult, you know, and say, I feel for you, you know, I, I, my heart goes out to you. But we have to find resourceful means to be able to overcome this. Because again, I'll say, we cannot help them if we cannot help ourselves. We have to 
be able to manage our own feelings first. We need to identify with, that we are survivors. We are not the victims. Okay, they, our Palestinian Muslim brothers and sisters, they are the victims. So, Zahira, uh, the issue is um, we know that this is splurged all, you know, all across the media. Uh, this is the talking point the world over. Um, our children are not immune to it. We sometimes uh, forget that they're around. Uh, we sometimes even forget they're around when we switch on the TV and watch coverage or the latest updates on what's, what is going down in Palestine. Um, and I also know that these issues are being discussed at school level. So how do we help our kids cope? How do we make them understand that the world is not a happily ever after place, that there are different people with different um, different outlooks on life, different belief systems, uh, different religions, uh, different likes and dislikes, and different claims to sovereignty, etc. We need to help our children so cope, and how do we do that? So, very importantly, the, the most important thing to note is education. We need to educate our children on, on where on how to deal with the emotions. This is a very crucial point. We need to teach them how to manage the emotions and how to be emotionally mature in that, you know what? Yes, you are feeling bad, but how can we help them? How do we help them? What is the best way to help the Palestinian um, Muslim brothers and sisters? How do we reach out? You know, teach them how to reach out. Teach them that it's okay to feel bad, but at the same time, and it's okay to feel sad, but at the same time, how do you manage those emotions? Yes, you cry. Yes, you feel sad. But at the same time, you know, we cannot live around it because, again, you know, we teach them that you are going to be there to support them. You need to be strong enough to support them when they come through this. We need to be there to help them, to support them by raising awareness. We the more we educate our children about emotional, about how to deal with emotions, about how to um, to feel for them without internalizing the emotions, about how to be supportive of our Muslim brothers and sisters without actually taking on their trauma, and you know how to teach them how to not be obsessive about the traumatic event. Remember something also. When you start noticing that children are having nightmares and they're not eating well and, you know, and it's been going on for a progressive time, you need to take them for counseling. There is help out there. We need to seek the help. You know, mental health is just as important as physical health. And I think the more we accept that our children might need that, the better it is for us as adults and as parents. So, Heda, let's go for an ad break. I've got four more questions to put to you, four or five questions, which we do need to get through if you don't mind. So let's go for the ad sure. break and we'll be back with you, inshallah. Amen. Perfect blend of stylish decor, exquisite halal cuisine and warm hospitality come together. It could only mean Al Bayt Lodge, your true home away from home. Al Bayt is the ideal heaven for families, business people, and tourists with its four-star family rooms and other luxurious facilities. Conveniently situated close to Port Elizabeth Airport, the beach and other amenities, your stay will be truly unforgettable as you'll be taking home lasting memories of the warm hospitality, the serenity and tranquility that Albate has to offer. For reservations, call 041-583-6415 or visit www.albaitlodge.co.za. When you give water, you're reaching out to drought-affected areas, bringing them to life. Fresh water to drink, to clean, and to grow. That's the power of water. Donate now to Islamic Relief. Shimmer, sparkle, captivate. Nothing less than a masterpiece. Droplets of gold inspires precious design. Platinum bursts with intricate freshness. And every pure diamond becomes more than just a girl's best friend. Voda Gold Gem Jewelers. 
where timeless dreams become a reality. Come to us. We tailor make designer gold, platinum, and diamond jewelry. Trade in or remodel your old gold. Clad yourself with classy name branded watches. We offer insurance valuation and freezer card calculation. Visit us at 534 Ridge Road Overport or call 031 208 9142. Voda Gold Gem Jewelers, manufacturers of fine gold and diamond jewelry. Sansaf's Meals Distribution Project aims to create food security for those in need. By supporting our program, you can help us in our mission to provide access to nutritious meals on a daily basis and help us extend our reach. Join Sansaf in the fight against hunger by contributing to our food security initiatives. To learn more, visit sansaf.org.za or call 011-834-6046. Sansaf, changing lives through development and relief. Rejuvenating media day by day. This is Salam Media. The time is exactly 9.56 a.m., our final interview of the morning, and it is with Zahira Singh. She is a psychologist accredited with the British Psychological Society, also accredited counsellor and director of Tough Love South Africa. We're talking about how to deal with guilt and anxiety from graphic Palestinian images and videos. Um, Zaira, welcome back. I, I've noticed that, at, you know, these protest marches are very, very important and we shouldn't stop doing that. I was talking to a member of parliament earlier on, uh, Faiz Jacobs, he's with the ANC, and he says the power of all of these um, peaceful protest marches is what is making world governments uh, sit up and realize that something needs to be done, that the carnage has to stop. Uh, but I'm also wondering about uh, parents taking their children to these marches. How do you feel about it? Well, I think as long as our children feel safe, I think if you're taking your child to a march, it's perfectly fine, provided that you've explained to them why they are there and provided that they understand that they are doing good by being there and also by making them feel safe, making them understand that you know what by going there it's okay you're only trying to help your brothers and sisters in Palestine that's about it you know without overwhelming them with too much information remember give them give them ways to draw you know how they're feeling when you when a child draws or when they have to speak about how they are feeling it's important so that you acknowledge how they're feeling so going to a march is very much encouraged, provided you explain to them, you know, if they're old enough. If they're young enough, then you make them feel safe while taking them to the march anyway. Okay. Uh, we talk about uh, compassion fatigue and secondhand trauma. Uh, what is that all about? I know I touched on trauma being thousands of miles away from Palestine, but I also feel traumatized by everything I'm hearing and seeing on screen. Okay, so secondhand trauma is, is basically a form of trauma that a person experiences um, and it's not due to something that has happened to you directly. So in essence, that is what we um, in South Africa are suffering from, is secondhand trauma, because we are not the ones going through the trauma itself. Okay, and then if you look at compassion fatigue, basically what it is is that, you know, because you are surrounded by so many people who are going through, who are going through the trauma and that type of thing, you know, being there for them or caring for them and their emotional pain and seeing to their emotional needs, you know, that can result in compassion fatigue. How do you then get out of it? What is it that you do to get out of that zone, re-energize okay, so, and start uh, touching, you know, start being there for people? Sure. So obviously, I mean, one of the things that you want to do is be resilient, okay? Mm -hmm. And there's a few things that you can do to be resilient, especially to, to combat compassion fatigue. Because that's important, because you want to be supportive of the people around you, but at the same time, you need to be strong enough to do that. So there's a few things. Number one is you can connect with other people, like other family and friends, 
you know, um, other family members. You can also um, Google up or look up on good uh, problem solving skills. You can also find positive meanings to the trauma. So, for example, you know, you you um, promote positivity with the people that you that you are listening to and that you are empathizing with. Also, I mean, you look for social support. You can also find ways to manage your feelings. For example, like I said earlier, you can journal. You can even record something for yourself and then continue playing it, you know, to re-energize yourself. And remember that there is help out there as well, you know. Um, mm. There's trauma debriefing that can be done mm -hmm. by counselors, um, by psychologists as well. So you can go for a trauma debrief regularly, you know, just to kind of ease yourself so that you are not overly exhausted from listening to all of this trauma. And then regarding regarding yourself, regarding the secondhand trauma, I mean, you will see signs and symptoms of emotional um, trauma as well as physical signs of the trauma, you know, but there are several ways to overcome that as well. Um, number one is remember not to force the healing process. Deal with your emotions. You know, allow yourself to feel whatever you're feeling and don't feel guilty for what you're feeling. You're feeling what you're feeling for a reason and it's mm. being able to deal with it. Also remember like drawing, um, doodling, sitting on a chair, just kind of looking around yourself, you know, being aware of your five senses. Um, also, I mean, if you, if you feel like you're chronically traumatized and you feel like you cannot manage, there are certain things that you can do. For example, I mean, we know that the Palestinian flag is red, green, and black, and white. You know, look at something in the room that's blue. Focus on that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. try and distract your mind away from what is going on in, in order to train your brain not to internalize. Um, and then also, I mean, you could ground yourself. You could walk outside. Mm -hmm. You could do something like gardening. Just distract yourself for a short while. Okay, um, guilt and disassociation, I've also come across, and this is happening a lot in our community, when the little kids don't want to finish their food and they're very fussy about what they want and they don't want, um, you know, we hear parents telling them, eat your food or be grateful for what you got. The poor children in Palestine don't even have food and water. Are we supposed to be saying those type of things to them? In essence, not entirely, because you, on the one hand, yes, they are feeling bad over the, what we need to be doing is doing it more positively, to say, you know, we need to make sure our Palestinian Muslim brothers and sisters because they do not have food every day. How about you eat your food? You know, mm. not make them feel guilty, because when you say you're not eating your food, you're almost blaming them for the Palestinian children uh -huh. not having food. Mm, mm. And, and we don't want to target that kind of behavior. You want to say, let's help them, but not. But, but you need to eat your food so that you can be strong enough and we can go for a march next week or whatever it may be. Also, eat your food so that we can draw a picture for your, you know, a Palestinian little baby that's on that side, something like that. Okay. Uh, let's wrap up. Any final words of advice you have for us, uh, Zahira? Yes. Um, I would like to say, please, everybody out there listening, feel your healings. And if you need help, please seek the help that you do need. Do not avoid, do not dissociate. Our Muslim brothers and sisters need us, and we need to be strong enough to help them. Sahira so Singh, psycholo psychologist accredited with the British Psychological Society, also accredited counselor and director of Tough Love South Africa. Thank you indeed for those words of wisdom. and. Uh, you stay safe till the next time. Assalamu alaikum and khuda hafiz. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And that's where we leave it. Time for me to wrap up on this very cold, grey and wet Tuesday morning. A shout out to our uh, producers, Nasri Naidu, the content producer, and Abdus Salam behind the controls. Still tomorrow morning, please take care on the roads. It's wet and it's very, very slippery. We'll talk again. And we will um, obviously uh, lift each other up again and uh, in a constant duas for our Palestinian brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum and khud hafiz. <laughs>